Hello, everybody. Say hi, Aria. You're doing good, baby girl. Yeah. All right. So, let's see if I can turn the video. Can't see myself, but hopefully it looks good. So, I'm going to give you guys some info as to why Aria is back in the hospital. I'm going to open my notes here. Um, but she's doing good-ish at the moment. Okay, I always say Aria's doing good. That's a downfall of mine. She's doing okay. <laughs> so, uh, I tend to forget that people don't know everything that goes on with Aria. Um, I'm living in it, so it's hard, it's hard for me to realize what you guys do and what you guys don't know. I'm going to try my best to explain why she's in the hospital. So, three, uh, the week of September 16th, Aria had three days in a row where she was, like, inconsolable we we could not do anything it was around 4 or 5 p.m each night we couldn't do anything to calm her down it was a lot of me trying to hold her and rock her and just get her to stop crying like she is red in the face tears in her eyes crying and, and just could not calm her down um in some instances she was kind of turning a gray color like she needed help she needed extra oxygen she was on eight liters at home in these times uh it would take about 45 minutes for her next dose of the highly addictive medication she's on to kick in um, because this was this was happening after we had started trying to wean her off of the medication and so um yeah about 45 minutes for medicine to kick in and then she'd finally just fall asleep out of pure exhaustion and just like you could tell she was so tired poor girl so one of these days like she was irritable like the whole day like it it, it, it impacted her it was bad so after three days we finally decided we're going to take her to the er and so we did, and one of the first things they did, aside from put two IVs in her, and in one of them give her something that's in the same family as Ativan, um, just to kind of get her to calm down, was they checked her trach. They basically did a trach change, and what they found was that her trach had been plugged. That basically means that her airway, the way she breathes, um, there was like a little airway passage, but it wasn't the full airway. She was not able to get that full breath that she wanted because it's basically take like the things that that is that we cough up and stuff it's just kind of stuck there she can't get rid of it she can't cough it up we have what we call an inline suction to get that stuff out but that inline suction actually was it just kind of made a hole in this what we call secretions it made a hole in it and that was it it wasn't able to fully get it out so it's kind of like think about us breathing through a straw rather than our full airway it would it wouldn't be comfortable so um they brought her in, but because of her coming off the medication and not handling the weaning well, they decided to keep her. Um, she's coming off of some highly addictive medication. In this process, as we've weaned, she has thrown up a lot. And babies do throw up, but the problem with her throwing up and, and having what they call emesis is that she she's in a high risk of aspiration. That means that the liquid can get into her lungs and basically slow down this progress that she's made with her chronic lung disease which really is not good for her because the lungs are what we need to heal. So they're trying to protect her lungs as much as possible, keep watching everything. She's also had moments where she's had really elevated heart rates in this weaning process. Her heart rate's typically 140 to 160. She's been in the 200s before just, just sitting there or sometimes getting aggravated. But like there have been days where she's just resting and it's 180, 190. So um, she also has a lot faster of a breathing rate at times. And this isn't good like she's just sitting there like trying really hard to breathe and she's not doing anything but also it's not good because it takes calories from her she's not able to get the nutrients that she needs and all that and so there's a period of time where she actually wasn't gaining weight in here um and we're trying to help her with that um it can also be hard when she does get angry while she's in the hospital um and it can take some time to get her to get back to where she was get her to calm down and so the RTs have to come in here, increase her oxygen, or they have to give her manual breaths called bagging. Um, and and that that's just, it's tough to watch sometimes because she's just, she's just having a tough time. She's having some hard days, that's for sure. At home, we wouldn't have these extra meds that they can give her. We wouldn't have the extra hands. She wouldn't be constantly monitored. Um, the monitoring they have here is better than the monitor that we have at home. So um the so for now we stay um we try to comfort we try to help but if you've ever known anyone who's coming off of any kind of drug it's really hard and her body craves it it's not getting the same amount that it once had once she's off these medications she she will be her smiley laughing happy self again 
it's gonna take some time it's gonna take some tough love but she's gonna get there um and kind of her status right now even today like she's at three and a half liters of oxygen when at home she was at one liter um she's a little bit fussy today yesterday she was really sensitive to even just putting her bed rails back up in the hospital like that makes her jump and so um, each day we kind of we kind of have to take what what she gives and just get her through through it um, and so yeah right now we're kind of here and she's doing good though I will show you her in a second but hopefully I've explained everything well enough and thank you for your prayers and your love and we love you all one other thing to explain that I don't think people understand is like so she's at a different hospital now because this one's actually closer to home this one has a TICU, a technology dependent ICU, and that's where she's at, which is amazing um, for, for all the hospitals that have technology dependent like sections of the hospital. It's pretty awesome. And so um, she's able to kind of get, we feel like, you know, the, the more specified care for what she deals with. But here she is. Say hi, Aria. <laughs> we love you, baby girl. Gotta get better soon so you can come back home. Say bye, internet. <laughs> bye, Aria. Bye, guys. <laughs>